Hello everyone, hope we're having an awesome day. Uh, yesterday we learned a lot about competition, limiting factors, uh, as well as carrying capacity. Today we'll explore that a little bit uh, more in depth and we'll do a little lab together. Uh, for this lab you can either A, you can do your own lab at home and kind of follow along with the directions as I go through them, or B, you can watch and do the lab with me and you don't have to make it all yourself. Uh, the choice is yours. Uh, so, the equipment you're going to need, uh, you need your sheet of paper, just a regular 8 by 11 and a half uh, sheet of paper, loose leaf. Uh, you need a ruler, hopefully. Uh, if you have one, great. If not, we can make it work otherwise. Uh, you also could use a pencil, and you could use some scissors. All right. So those are the equipment you'll need for this lab. Step one, we're going to cut an 8 inch by 8 inch ecosystem square from our paper. All right. And so 8 inch by 8 inch. So you can do this two ways. One, you can measure 8 inches from your paper, 8 inches down, 8 inches across. What's nice about an 8 by 11 and a half is that it's already 8 inches one way. All you have to do is cut it the other. Okay? So about 8 inch by 8 inch, that'll be your ecosystem. All right? uh, if you don't have a ruler, that's okay. What you can do with your sheet of paper, at the top you have this blank space here, then you have blue lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. On the sixth line, cut there, and then your ecosystem will be about eight inches uh, by eight inches. All right. And so you're going to set your eight inch by eight inch ecosystem off to the side. Step two. You're going to cut 21 inch by one inch plant squares from your leftover piece of paper. Okay, so this leftover piece that you have from your environment, you're going to cut those into eight one inch, by, or sorry, excuse me, you're going to cut that into one inch by one inch squares. Okay, and so typically for us, you know, if you look at your knuckle here, it's about the length from your index finger knuckle to that second knuckle right there. So it's about that long for you. Uh, if you make that your inch, that should work. You want to have 20 of those squares. I happen to use a different sheet of paper for this uh, before I made the video because I wanted to practice. Uh, I have 20 individual 1 inch by 1 inch squares. I also wrote P on them. I wrote P on them because they are going to represent our plants, uh, specifically the roots of our plants and how far they extend. All right. So I have all my materials ready. I no longer need the ruler. I no longer need the scissors. Get them out of the way. Okay. So we are going to now do step three. We're going to randomly uh, toss eight plants into the environment. All right, so I'm not just going to place them down. I'm just going to kind of throw them up into the air. If a plant misses the environment, you toss again. So let's say I toss. All right, I toss, and if you look down with me, you see how my plants didn't make it to the ecosystem? I should toss that one again. You want to make sure it lands on your piece of paper. Okay? Now, Important thing to note, if the plant doesn't touch another plant, it survives. If the plants do touch, so our squares touch each other, you have to remove both plants. That means the plants are dead. Okay? You'll record our plants that survived and our plants that died in the data table below. All right? So I'm going to toss eight plants, and then we'll take a look at this together. So I'm going to pause, and let's see what happens. If you're doing this at home, you can toss your eight plants now. So, I've just tossed all my plants. Let's take a look at our results. 
right, so when we look down at our ecosystem, check it out. I have tossed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plants in. Six of them are not touching any other plant. Two of them are. So that means six plants survived, two plants died. So in my data table here, I'm going to type in six plants survived, two plants died. If you're doing this at home on your own, record yours. How many plants survived in your experiment? How many plants died in, in the first trial with eight? Okay. Now, step four. We're going to repeat steps three. So we're going to repeat what we just did, but now we're going to toss 10 plants in. And we'll do the same for 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20 plants. All right. So I'm going to wipe off my ecosystem, it is clear, and I'm going to pause the video again, and I will repeat for trial two. So I've tossed mine in randomly, and let's take a look at what happened. Check it out. Ah, pretty far. So check it out. I had one, two, three, four plants that survived. The other six happened to touch each other. Not a very good round, huh? But it happened, it's the truth, not gonna lie about it. So, four plants died, or sorry, four plants survived, four plants lived, six plants died. Now I'm gonna repeat for trial three with 12 plants. Trial three's in the books, let's take a look. Check it out, 12 plants in, one, two, three, four, Five, six survived. The other six died. There's some overlap and touching with the other six. So, six plants survived. Six plants died. Rinse, repeat. Not legit rinse, but wipe your board. And then we'll try again for trial four with 14 plants. Let's take a look again. Check it out. I tossed in 14 plants. One, two, three, four survived. Two, four, six, eight, ten died. The other ten are touching at least one other plant. Oofta. So, four plants survived, ten plants died. Uh, wipe your board. Let's repeat for trial five. So, trial five, I tossed 16 plants in there. Let's see what happened. So, as we take a look, all of those plants died. Uh, so, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plants that survived, which means there's two, four, six, eight plants that also died. So, Eight plants survived, eight plants died. Wipe the board, repeat for trial six. Trial six, we have 18 plants that we are going to toss in. So, here's what happened when we tossed 18 in. Ooh-wee. So, uh, let's start with the ones that aren't touching anything. One, two, three, four are not touching. So that means four out of 18 survived. Yikes. So if four survived out of 18, that means 14 of them died. Yikes. Okay, so we'll repeat this one more time. And now we're going to do all 20 plants. We're going to toss them all in. I'm going to pause the video. Let's see what happens when we have 20 plants in our ecosystem. All right. So, final trial. Let's take a look. So, all one, two, so those plants are dead. So there's one plant that survived, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All the other plants. Did not make it. So, 
seven plants survived in trial seven, while about, not about, 13 of them died. So there's our experiment there, all right? And from our experiment, let's kind of summarize what we did today and what we've learned over the past couple of days. So, number one, for summarizing our results, we're going to make an inference. An inference, again, is we're trying to explain why we're seeing certain observations. So, what limiting factors are these plants competing for? So, our plants are living or dying. Why? What are they competing for? And so in your sentence, plants are competing for, what are some of the things that plants compete for? Type them in that space there. Pause this video if you need to. Okay. Two, let's summarize. Each trial we added two plants to the total population. What happened to the number of plants that died in each trial? Okay, and then why do you think you saw this trend? Okay, so in trial eight, we saw two plants die. We added two more plants, six died. We added two more plants, six died again. We added two more plants, ten died. We added two more plants, surprisingly fewer died, only eight. Then we added two more plants for 18. 14 of them died, and then we had two more plants, 13 of them died. So what tended to happen as we added more and more plants? As we added more total plants, what happened? Type your pattern in here. Three, you're going to make a quick identification. What is the carrying capacity of this ecosystem for plant life? Uh, remember, the carrying capacity is the maximum population of an organism an ecosystem can support. So we have to go up into our data table, and we have to figure out for our ecosystem for this plant life, how many plants can survive in our ecosystem. You can do the maximum number, or you can take a rough estimate and you'll type that number in here. Last but not least, you're gonna make a little prediction, all right? And your prediction is an educated guess. Uh, what factors could change in our ecosystem that would support more plant life? So you're kind of making, you're making a guess and you're kind of going back to one and two. What caused our plants to die? What were they competing for? What were the resources that were in our ecosystem? And what could you do to change those resources that would help support more plant life? You type your prediction in here. After you answer questions one, two, three, and four, you'll turn this Google Doc in to Google Classroom. If you have any questions, watch the video, ask me, I hope to see you uh, if you have any questions. I hope you enjoyed the lab. I enjoyed doing the lab uh, this way. Hopefully you were able to do the lab yourself. If not, no worries. You were able to follow along with me. I hope you have a fantastic day. Stay safe. Take care. Tell someone you love them.